Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw clouds. I'm going to be doing a full color illustration. And I started with this picture of uh, Kiki uh, from Kiki's Delivery Service and her little cat, Gigi. Um, it's not going to be a lesson on how to draw them, sadly. It's really going to be more about the background. Um, so let's begin with some basic guidelines. I'm going to just do this in uh, uh, time lapse. Not, it's not really guidelines, it's going to be the contour lines of these clouds. And uh, I'll be back to say a little word about that. All right, so I've uh, got the basic contour lines of these clouds in place. And, uh, you know, people might ask, how do you know um, what shape to make these clouds and so forth? Well, I looked at a photograph, basically, and I would encourage you to do the same if, uh, if indeed you're trying to do something that looks quite realistic. Um, so uh, basically, this video is not so much going to be about how to draw the contour lines of clouds. Of course, there's so many different types of clouds and so forth. It's really going to be more about the shading. And uh, to begin with, ironically, it's going to be more about shading the sky than about shading the uh, clouds, or I should say coloring, really, um, rather than shading. I'm going to be using two pencils, basically, two blue pencils, and um, uh, Prismacolor makes a type of pencil called the Very Thin, V-E-R-I-T-H-I-N. Um, not necessarily saying, hey, go out and spend money on these, but if, uh, by chance, you want to try to follow along with this, uh, take care to note that there are two different types of um, Prismacolors. These very thin uh, ones are a, a harder lead, which allows you to get more precise. Um, the trade-off is that, the, you, of course, you have to push down a lot harder uh, to uh, get color. This is a different type here, for example, um, a softer lead, a little less precise, but you don't have to push down so hard. Anyway, uh, that's uh, just a little tip there if you want to try to use uh, color pencils for doing what I'm doing here. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is begin to work on uh, shading in the sky, and I'm going to do a little bit of this real time, but this is really mostly going to have to be done um, in time lapse. I, maybe I need to put up the time lapse warning <laughs> for you all who don't like time lapse. This is going to be a time lapse intensive video. Um, uh, drawing clouds full color like this uh, takes patience, takes time. Uh, it would, if I did this all real time again, it would probably end up being an hour long video. I don't like to do videos that long, uh, so uh, hopefully we can keep this one down to, you know, I like to go 20, uh, 25 minutes at the most for my videos uh, that are done in a step-by-step -step way. Anyway, let me just say that I'm holding my pencil pretty low to the surface of the uh, paper, which allows a very wide area of the uh, lead. I don't know, is it supposed to be lead when you talk about colored pencil? Because it's, I don't know if it is made of lead. Somebody answer that. Uh, but you know what I mean. The pencil-y pad of the pencil. Uh, holding it down low to the paper like this allows you to get the widest part possible surface, and then you get this very, um, ironically, in, uh, imprecise, sort of deliberately imprecise line, but it allows you to create and build up gradually a, um, a, a relatively smooth, unvaried area of blue, and that's really what I'm going for at this stage. Now, uh, let's go ahead then and kick it into time-lapse um, maybe just for this, uh, actually I should probably, I'm getting some glare, I believe, off of this, the light here. I don't know, boy that's a tricky one. Maybe I should move and shift to another section lower down here, uh, where we won't get quite so much glare. Maybe over here. Um, and this is where I'm going to uh, maybe do some time lapse and show you how I would gradually build towards quite a dark blue of the sky in the upper area of this illustration. Um, and it's going to shift to this uh, lighter shade of blue as we go down toward the bottom. So anyway, let's go ahead. I'll kick it into time lapse and, and move a little further along uh, in this process of shading in the sky. Okay, so I built up a certain level of darkness with um, that darker blue pencil, and I'm switching to this lighter blue pencil. And um, again, holding very low to the page, I'm going to begin to introduce this lighter shade. And um, the goal, of course, is to uh, reach a point when we get down here where we have shifted 
all the way to this uh, lighter color blue. And, you know, I'm just sort of uh, giving you a sense of, of where that will kick in, where it becomes, by the time you get down to the bottom cor corner, it should be purely this um, lighter blue. Anyway, um, yeah, sadly, I think I really do have to continue time-lapsing through um, a lot of this coloring in the sky stuff, but hopefully I've shown you enough in real time um, my process of, uh, like I said, holding the pencil low to the page and just gradually uh, building it up. And one of the reasons that I chose uh, actually to do the sky <clears throat> with colored pencils, well, there's two reasons. Um, one is that people say, you know, have been asking for a long time, please show us how to do these things in colored pencils instead of watercolors and pastels and other materials that they say they don't have or have trouble using. Um, the other is that uh, it's just, it's a great way of... Um, gradually working toward a finished result. Um, those of you who have used markers, uh, there is this sort of do or die moment where you go in there with a marker and boom, there's the color. And let's hope you got it right, you know, and you didn't leave any streaks and lines or smudge things up or whatever. Um, colored pencil, I think, is great for the person who uh, is not, you know, confident enough <laughs> to just go in there with a, a do-or-die color. Um, with colored pencil, you are allowed time to very, very gradually work your way towards uh, the color that you want. Of course, you know, the trade-off is uh, how time-consuming it is, and is going to be, indeed, for me today, to, to color in this whole sky. It's going to take quite a long time. Um, to be honest, I could probably do it a lot faster with uh, pastel, frankly. Uh, uh, but pastel gets messy and there's, uh, you know, there's always the trade-off from one uh, medium to the other. Anyway, I'm going to kick it into a sort of prolonged period of time lapse during which uh, I may well carry all the way through this whole um, sky area showing you this gradation again from a darker blue at the top down to a lighter blue at the bottom. So let's get into it. All right, well, I feel like I've got enough of the sky done at this point. It is time to get onto the clouds. I know a lot of people will be like, dude, I came here to watch a video about how to draw clouds, and all you're doing is drawing the sky? What a rip. So it is time to get onto the clouds. I'm going to go ahead and erase the uh, pencil lines that I'd put in there to begin with, which might seem a little strange, but I um, want the, the transition between the clouds and the sky behind them to be soft. And so getting rid of those guidelines uh, is going to, you know, there will be no line of any kind around the edge, and then I can sort of go back in and decide where uh, shading may define uh, the clouds a little more, or indeed where there will be no shading, and it just has a very soft... Uh, gentle edge to it. So having done that, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring out a sort of mid-gray pencil, also the very thin, uh, as they're called. And um, I think I'm going to confine myself to around, well, let's see. Let's go ahead and work on this cloud here, because uh, I, th I think we'll have less uh, glare than what we have had uh, uh, up in this area. i got to figure out my lighting situation, people, here. You call yourself a professional, I can't even look, see anything in the upper left-hand corner. I want my money back. Anyway, so I'm adding a little bit of shading here. As you would expect, a cloud uh, uh, generally has um, shading on the lower uh, edge. Um, but it, it doesn't necessarily, the shading does not necessarily close in on that line. And um, looking at photographs, um, I noticed that sometimes there was, uh, you know, the darkness was... Uh, uh, separated just a little bit from that lower edge. Other times it would actually come all the way uh, down there and so I'm just sort of uh, circling in. I'm using sort of circular motions of my pencil as I try to build something up here. And um, sadly again this uh, this part of the video is um, probably inevitably going to give way to time lapse. It's a, a long slow process. Um, and not one that uh, I can take you through in a line-by-line -line way, you know, 
through the entire process. But uh, hopefully I can give you enough of this uh, in a, in a real-time sense that you can try to reproduce these effects. I must uh, confess that I have never really focused on drawing clouds that much uh, over the course of my career. It has not been something that I've uh, given a lot of time to. I think it's something that when we're kids we sort of draw clouds in this very quick, you know, cartoony way. Uh, and unless you decide to to do an illustration that really focuses on the sky a lot, you may never quite get past that way of rendering clouds in, in a sort of largely symbolic way. Um, I've said this in other videos, but I will say it again. If you want um, your drawing or your illustration to look realistic, if you're going for something that you want people to look at and recognize as... Um, similar to reality, then you should look at reference. You should look at photos. You should look up at the sky. <laughs> In this case, look at the real clouds. Of course, they will be moving by a lot of the times, and so it it may be uh, just as effective to uh, turn to uh, photographs. Um, but, um, yeah, there is sort of this idea of people saying, look, I didn't look at anything while I drew this. Like, that is uh, some badge of honor um, and that looking at a photograph is somehow cheating, and uh, I'm here to tell you that professional illustrators, especially, you know, it's, it all comes down, do you want it to look like reality, or do you want it to look like a sort of stylized version of reality? If you want it to be cartoony, if it's like, you know, say Tim Burton or something, and it has this very exaggerated, uh, stylized look, then of course, yeah, you don't really need to look at photos, I don't think. I'd be kind of surprised if they do look at a lot of photos as they're doing that type of illustration or modeling. But if you want, in my case, I want this to um, call to mind actual clouds in the sky. So, of course, I looked at photos and I um, tried to, re you know, reproduce. Now, another thing that you could also look at is, like, uh, paintings. You could look at classical paintings. Uh, nobody uh, ever did, um, you know, in artwork, no one ever captured uh, cloud-like effects any better than the great masters uh, of oil painting, all the way through to, um, you know, the Impressionists, I think, would show you how to uh, render clouds with just a few um, strokes of the brush and so forth. Uh, anyway, I think I've probably given as much advice as I can. You know, this is... It, uh, let me just sort of, sort of touch on something, actually. Lately, uh, lately I find myself hearing uh, or reading in the comment section a lot of people saying, you know, we find it more useful when you just give us general tips rather than to give step-by-step, line-by-line lessons of how to draw one particular drawing. And um, that is the voice that I'm hearing most loudly in recent times. Um, which is making me think that maybe a video like this that um, doesn't attempt to show you every single step of the process, or here, put one line here, put another line there, but goes through general principles about, you know, um, uh, how to build up the shading, how much time it takes, and so forth, that you could apply to an, uh, any illustration rather than simply copying this one illustration. Uh, I feel like there are um, maybe even more people who like that than like a step-by-step, -step, line by line thing. So let me know what you should think. Uh, if you want to if you want to call my attention to the fact that you do like step by step, line by line videos and that you don't want me to abandon that process all uh, or that approach altogether, please let your voice be heard in the comment section. I think I will probably still continue to do some videos that way, but I feel myself um, uh, probably leaning more towards generalized videos that uh, don't have uh, that sort of line-by-line -line approach. Anyway, enough about that. I'm going to go ahead and kick it into time-lapse to add a little more shading, uh, and you can watch me continue uh, and finish this process. Okay, so I'm nearing the end of this uh, shading process, and, um, you know, apart from telling you to observe photographs, I suppose the... Um, uh, the other final thing that I can say about this part of it is to um, get make some decision about what the darkest area is going to be. Um, so, like, say right here and right here, th this, these are my darkest parts. 
And then um, having uh, figured out those bits, then you're uh, just trying to get the range between the two of them. Um, I suppose that your biggest problem at this stage would be to have it all be too light and too tentative or else too dark. Uh, and between those two, I'd say too dark is really a problem. Uh, looking at clouds, you, they generally um, are not going to have really dark, unless it's storm clouds, right? They're not going to have really dark shaded areas. So um, patience is going to pay off uh, at, at this stage, at all stages of uh, this particular uh, subject matter. But what I'm going to do now is switch uh, back to this um, dark blue pencil and for a moment at least uh, show you the, my final step in this process which is to further define certain uh, areas of the contour uh, of some of these clouds and create little pockets of blue like that I noticed in one photograph of, of a particular you know uh, area of clouds in the sky that there was one section that was not very solid, that uh, the, the, the cloud was sort of breaking apart into uh, littler bits. And so that's what I'm doing right here, is I'm working back into this area, um, uh, causing the edge to sort of fragment a little bit. Now, you don't want to get carried away and start doing that everywhere throughout the entire illustration. You'll, you'll sort of uh, rob that effect of its uh, power. Um, but uh, certainly in this one area, I'm going to be doing it quite a bit. And then you'll see me do uh, a, a little of it in other sections as well. But let me go ahead and finally do one last bit of uh, time lapse as I carry out this last uh, part of the illustration. I suppose I could say in advance that I'm using the dark blue pencil uh, for creating this uh, area here when I get down to this um, bottom part of it and I want to add similar areas of definition I'll switch to the other pencil so as to match uh, this lighter blue color but one last little bit of uh, time lapse and we will be done All right, well, there's my video on how to draw clouds. Let me know what you thought of it. I think this might have been the first video I've done in which all of the instructional stuff was done using colored pencils. Um, let me know what you thought. I could definitely do more such videos in the future. But let me thank, as I always do, the people who have supported me by getting my books, Minky Falls and Brody's Ghost, both of those graphic novel series, as well as Mastering Manga, my How to Draw book. When you get these books, you really do help me out a lot, and I do appreciate that. But let's lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.